Hi guys, I hope you are well. In today's video, I wanted to cover an important topic um, on gastrointestinal or gut stasis, also known as ileus in rabbits. It's a common and potentially life-threatening condition, which I feel like people should be more aware of. So it occurs when the normal, regular wave-like movements of the intestines either slow down or stop altogether. Bad bacteria can build up in the intestines and release gas into the system. The same bacteria can also release toxins which can lead to extreme pressure on the liver and then cause a liver failure. As the condition progresses, food or fecal material within the intestines start to dry out, becoming firm and very difficult to pass and that can lead to an obstruction as well which further complicates the problem. So I want to move on to the causes of GI stasis. There are a few factors that can contribute to it. Dehydration, when bunny is not drinking enough water, lack of exercise can lead to obesity and in turn reduce the mobility and then food is digested at a slower pace. Stress could be a major factor as well, uh, could be because of a change of environment lately or a nearby stimulus such as fireworks can stress your bunny. Now, if the bunny is fed a diet low in fiber and also high in starch, so carbohydrates, that is a um, contributing factor. Also the pain from any underlying health issues such as dental infections or urinary tract infections. There are a few signs and symptoms that you can look out for to determine if your bunny is going through GI stasis. If your bunny is not being as active as they usually would be and they're quite lethargic, that could be a sign. Being hunched up in a loaf position and also whilst they do so, they also press their tummy against the floor. Um, this is a big and one of the initial signs that you should notice if they are going through GI stasis. Now, bunnies love to sit in loaf position. It's normal, that means they're relaxed, they're happy. But if they also press in the tummy really hard and you will see it against the floor, that is a big sign. Bunnies, just like humans, have gurgling noise coming out from the stomach and that is perfectly healthy and normal. But if the sounds become very loud and aggressive or even if there's a lack of them, that is a sign that something is wrong. Another sign that you might notice is the fact that the poop is quite mushy and also gets stuck to the bottom. As well as the mushy poop which is less frequent, you may notice that the droppings of the poop is smaller than usual or also malformed and also possibly there might be lack of them. Even though bunnies are not vocal creatures, they can um, vocalize their pain by grinding their teeth very loudly. Now bunnies also grind their teeth, but it's more like pairing soft sound to indicate pleasure. So don't get the two confused. If it's very loud and you will hear it, it's going to be loud, then that means they're in pain. If you notice that your bunny is not eating as much hay, veggies or even treats, that means that they are not willing to eat because of the pain. Um, so the good thing to do in that case is to do a treat test. So what you want to do is offer them their favorite treat for Snowball is a banana. And if they're not wanting to take it, that is something to worry about because that means they won't eat anything, not even the favorite treat. You may notice bloating, so enlarged belly in your bunny, which um, feels quite squishy as well. And it indicates that the condition has progressed and is very advanced. A sign that you may potentially notice is the fact that they're not peeing as frequently. So I know it's quite hard to see normally, but let's say if you don't notice that many pee stains in your litter box, that is an indication they're not drinking enough and they're not peeing enough. If you suspect that your bunny is going through GI stasis, it's very important to contact your vet straight away and notify them that you do suspect they do have GI stasis. Try to get an appointment as quickly as possible. If your regular vet is unable to see them, go to your emergency vet right away. They will do a full physical exam to determine the cause of the gut slowdown. They might also take a blood sample to see if their glucose sugar level is 
higher than normal because as the condition um, gets more severe the glucose also rises they most likely will also take x-rays to assess the blockage and the presence of gas to see if also there's an obstruction if the vet diagnoses an obstruction the surgery will be needed to remove it it could be impacted food poop or fur balls if there's no obstruction in the gut the usual course of treatment will aim to stimulate the motility so the movement in the gut they probably will also administer the intravenous, also known as IV fluids, to help with the dehydration. And because this condition often causes a lot of pain to your bunny, they will probably also give them pain medication to alleviate the discomfort caused by the accumulation of gas. They may potentially also give them antibiotics to overcome the growth of harmful bacteria. Because bunnies will most likely not eat, uh, nutritional support might be advised. So they might give them some um, nutritional uh, special food by a syringe or by a feeding tube to ensure that the bunny gets essential nutrient. Remember the earlier the diagnosis and treatment action, the higher and quicker the chance of full recovery for your bunny. If you're unable to get your bunny to the vet straight away, uh, maybe because there's a long drive to get to your vet or, you know, there's a long waiting uh, queue to be seen. Any, for any reasons, if you can't get them to the vet straight away, there's a few things that you can do at home to kind of help with the symptoms and make them more comfortable before they get seen. Now, these things do not replace a proper vet treatment. These are just aimed to help them whilst you are waiting to be seen. So a good idea to have a digital thermometer and some Vaseline in your first aid kit to see if um, the bunny's temperature is within the normal range, which normally is 38.3 degrees Celsius to 39.4 degrees Celsius. And if the temperature drops below 38 degrees, that is a emergency that is um, fatal. If you notice that the temperature is below 38 degrees, it's good to have a hot water bottle or a heat pad prepared for them. So you can place it near them to kind of try to raise that temperature up a little bit. Also having uh, some nice warm blankets will help too. It's also good to use some syringes to kind of try to get some water into them. So try to um, draw some water up with the syringe and then offer it to them, see if they're gonna drink to help the dehydration. Also, hand feeding them fresh veggies and hay and treats if they take them is also um, good. Anything to just get them to eat a little bit. If your bunny trusts you enough uh, to touch the tummy you can also try to massaging the tummy to kind of relieve that wind and gas another thing I advise to do is to use some baby colic or gas relief drops um, also known as Sematicone um, in UK the one of the most known um, brands is Inficol and it usually comes even 40 milligrams per mil or 20 milligrams per mil strength so it depends on the brand uh, but it's either 40 or 20. Symeticone does not harm your bunny in any way and it can relieve some uh, gas. For brands that contain 40 milligrams per mil of Symeticone such as Inficol which is the one I have Giving one mil as a starter dose is plenty. If um, you're using another brand, which also is just pure Symeticone and it has 20 milligrams per mil, then if you double the starter dose, so instead of one mil, it will be two mils. That is also fine. So after you give them the initial dose, um, continue giving the same dose twice more every hour so after the first one after an hour give them the second dose and then again give them the third dose after an hour if by that time you still haven't been seen by the vet decrease the dosage by half so if you're using the 40 milligrams per mil decrease it to 0.5 and if you're using the 20 milligrams then decrease it to 1 mil and give the dosage every three to eight hours after the vet has seen your bunny you may have to carry on giving the treatment at home, such as oral fluids via syringe. You may have to force feed critical care food and only if your vet tells you to do so. 
、uh, and they have been examined already. You might have to carry on giving them prescribed medications such as motility meds, pain relievers, or even antibiotics. Sometimes, but rarely, they may give you a IV equipment so you can administer IV fluids at home. Prevention is the best treatment, so knowing the ways to prevent it from happening is very important. Sometimes, of course, you won't be able to prevent GI stasis; that's just life. But ensuring some factors are addressed at all times will decrease the likelihood of it occurring. Providing unlimited fresh grass hay and feeding fresh veggies and herbs twice daily will ensure they get proper fiber in the diet and reduces the risk of any dental problems, as rabbits wear down the teeth mostly with hay. Also, providing unlimited fresh water from a bowl and not a water bottle will limit the chance of possible dehydration. Lots of exercise to encourage proper gut movements. This should not be an issue if your bunny is a free roam. Hence, why I also encourage the owners to let their bunnies be free roaming. Regular brushing routine to avoid any ingestion of the furballs will help prevent a possible obstruction. Regular health checks visits at your vet will help to diagnose any underlying health issues, and they can be treated earlier, such as infections. Thus, limiting the chance of GI stasis. Bunnies are prey animals, so naturally they try to hide any signs of the illness or them being unwell to reduce the chance of them being a target for predators. Hence, why it's super important for you to be able to monitor them all the time to see if something's wrong. Lastly, you want to try to limit or eradicate any possible environment stressor to ensure a calm and safe and living environment for your bunny. So one thing you can do is also stick to the routine. That's all for this video. I hope you found it helpful. I'm sorry it was a longer one, but there was a lot to cover. I hope you're having a lovely day. Please comment, like, and subscribe, and I'll see you very soon. Bye.